Hello, my friends, evolutionary energy arts families. So, guys, let's start over here, checking in on the earth changes. We see we have major floods and landslides, leaving at least 57 people dead after the heaviest rain since records began. And this is in Brazil. As you see, that looks, that is certainly muck and mire and definitely a place where you could get stuck. And after days of intense downpours struck southeastern Brazil, triggering massive floods and landslides, Belo Horizonte City registered 6.7 inches of rain on Friday the 24th, highest precipitation in the city since records began in 1910. And so 48 of the fatalities were in the worst affected state of Minas Gerais, according to the state civil defense office. Most of the deaths were registered in Belo Horizonte, the capital of the state. It added that 19 others were missing. And as we have talked about, every, every continent besides Antarctica has been hit in a major way. Spain has been hit in a major way. And look at these cars just all piled up on top of each other. How many times have we seen that lately? You know, and again, check the car facts if he was buying a used car for sure. Severe hailstorm hits Malaga and this caused major power disruptions as well. And here you have at least 13 fatalities back when Storm Gloria battered different areas of the country. In Limonar, we have hailstorms, uh, hailstones up to 12 inches deep, causing heavy traffic, stranding residents in their homes as well. There's uh, pictures here and some video for you guys to check out. Yeah, Spain has been hit particularly hard recently. And we see an unusual rapid inflation detected beneath Mount Thorbjorn. And the aviation color code is raised to yellow here in Iceland as they are wondering if this is magma surging, surging and are we going to end up with another eruption up in that area. And we have 50,000 plus earthquakes in Alaska last year. So 2019 finishes as the second highest year on record. Lots and lots of activity. As we can see, Alaska is you know, right on the ring of fire and is one of the most active places in the world. And we have a strong and shallow, shallow 6.3 quake hit near the coast of the Solomon Islands. And here we see capital Nur Sultan under state of emergency as powerful winter storm hits Kazakhstan. And this area is buried in snow. Uh, there's a lot of videos for you guys to take a look at. And it's, it's so bad, you know, people are struggling to dig their houses open. Look at this lady oh, looking out the door. Can you imagine that? You got to dig a tunnel to your home. And of course, the snow is beautiful to many people. Cindy absolutely loves the snow. And she grew up in Idaho right on the Canadian border. And you see record cold sweeping Russia. And there again, yeah, the poles are on the move. And so... The new North Pole is heading towards Siberia, and it has crossed that center line right at the top uh, where we think of the actual North Pole position. And uh, as, as the poles are shifting, everything is shifting. And as we're going to see here, we uh, are setting up for some pretty intense weather in some areas. A brutal winter 2019-2020 finale could be in store for Europe and North America. As a potentially major sudden stratospheric warming event develops. And again, this is when the uh, Arctic actually warms and the poles dip down. So instead of having what we typically have as far as the polar vortex, a stable polar vortex, it becomes wavy. Actually, even sometimes we see two or even more develop. And that pushes the cold air farther down into areas that usually don't typically get it. And so when th these type of events happen, that's when we get crazy weather. And that is what is apparently setting up now. So we're going to have to watch that and see what happens a few weeks out. Now, Tal Volcano alert down to a three. It, it's still uh, a danger of an explosion. So it's not time to totally relax, but that's a good sign. 
And over here we see stuck on drifting iceberg. About 600 ice fishermen cut off from the shore by a giant ice crack in Russia. And if we, while I'm thinking about this, let me jump over back to Electroverse. And let us take a peek at the Arctic sea ice thickness here. And you can see the black line is the current line 2020. So it's still, as it has been running for maybe the last three or four months now, it's below the running average going all the way back to 2004. So we have less Arctic sea ice uh, volume, its thickness and expanse, uh, is what we are totally looking at volume than typical in the last, well, so 16 years or so. So potentially this is why these guys are getting stuck up there. But again, everything is moving, everything is fluid, everything is changing rapidly. And extremes are the norm. And here you see uncontrolled swarms of devouring locusts to hit East Africa, in the Middle East, and also Southwest Asia. And they are just devouring everything in no time. And just one day, a swarm of locusts the size of Paris could eat the same amount of food as half the population of France. And that's exactly what's forecast for an enormous region, Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya, which is being hit right now to Egypt, Sudan, Eritrea, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen, and even already has a massive famine ongoing. So, you know, this is adding to the situation with what's going to be uh, just the major food crisis that apparently is hitting globally. This is a, you know, a perfect storm. It's really the way to look at it with everything that's going on. And now, of course, obviously we have the coronavirus going on as well. So they didn't say a cause for this. Alabama Fire Chief confirms eight deaths in a boat dock fire. People heard them exploding in succession like popcorn. Boom, 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 boom. And so, you know, of course, in these times, I'm always wondering what is going on. Is it a plasma event? W you know, what's going on? Because obviously we're in a changing time right now. And at least eight people were killed early Monday in an explosive fire that consumed at least 35 vessels docked along Tennessee River. So all eight people who were known to be missing have been confirmed dead. The number could go up, but we don't know how many people were on the boats. Fire began just after midnight and quickly consumed the dock as people were sleeping. The wooden dock went up in flames, and aluminum roof that covered many of the vessels melted and collapsed, cutting off escape routes and raining debris over the area as boaters leapt into the river. At least seven people were sent to hospitals suffering from exposure to the flames or the frigid water. So that's a horrible tragedy there. And here we have a woman charged after Phoenix Airport park, partly evacuated. And th she was heard, well, she was arrested for reporting and making a false, false terrorism report. People said that uh, she mentioned something about having an explosive. And yeah, obviously it's not a proper thing to do nowadays. Or even sneeze or cough nowadays going on a plane. Homesteaders. And catastrophists are running for the hills to flee U.S. uncertainty. Well, there's a lot of reasons to run for the hills, guys. <laughs> and a lot of people are doing it. When I look at the shows that I'm usually watching, which is all living off the land, homesteading, uh, tiny ho homing, RVing, uh, even a lot lately of people that are doing uh, hot tent camping, where they actually have portable stoves that they bring with themselves. And in a lot of places, like from Alaska to northern Canada, it, it boggles my mind. But, you know, we can adapt. We're really, we're very, very resourceful beings. And humans made it through these times in the past. As apparently, you know, we go through this on a regular basis as we talk about, you know, the fifth world of the Hopi. So we, we can, and some are going to survive whatever comes our way, even if it is perhaps a solar nova by going inside the earth or into caves or what have you. 
But right now, there's people heading for the hills. And I think a lot of people do want to just kind of get out of this society. A lot of people are tired of this society and, you know, everything from the consumerism and the politics. There's a lot of people leaving certain states because of the politics. I could certainly understand that. There are a lot of states I wouldn't live in because of the politics, uh, because of too much intrusion by the government. And so, you know, a lot of people are heading for the hills. And this gets into uh, talking about Idaho and uh, this photo, I do believe, is of Idaho as well. North Carolina as well. And North Carolina's beautiful. I've lived there uh, on three different occasions. And so a lot of people are going to escape everything that's going on. And also, you know, the catastrophes that they f fear are coming. Because a lot of people believe that we are heading for a global financial collapse. Now we have the possibility of a pandemic that we are facing of course, there's always the looming threat of World War III and, you know, everything else with the earth changes. People are looking for what they perceive to be safe spots and they want to get away from society, want to get away from population centers. And a lot of people want to just live a simple life surrounded by nature and greenery. And, uh, you know, so it, what's happening is a lot of people are going into these areas and it's really actually is driving up the land prices substantially. Places like North Carolina, you know, in, in the mountainous area, uh, the prices of land and property there is, is growing very quickly. Idaho, tons of people are going to Idaho. Here's the Sun Valley, uh, Sun Valley Lake, Sun Valley, Idaho. Beautiful areas, and Cindy has family up that way. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are heading into these areas. A lot of people are leaving California. Uh, as well as other states because of, again, too much big brotherism going on. And so we're also seeing the mega rich doing this as well. And this is what uh, this is talking about as well. A lot of the very, very wealthy are also buying properties that are very remote. And we have an Australian woman that dies in a cake eating contest. Yes, seriously. Uh, sad and tragic in a festive event. But you know, there again, paramedics were called into a pub in the state of Queensland on Sunday afternoon after a woman was involved in a medical incident. So public broadcaster ABC reported 60-year-old had a seizure after she swallowed a lamington into her mouth. Lamingtons are a traditional Australian dessert. Cube-shaped sponge cakes dipped in chocolate covered in grated coconut. Sounds nice. She was rushed to a hospital in the coastal town of Hervey Bay, but later died. Wow. You know, crazy stuff. And here we see 20 tips for making a bug out camp. And um, some things to consider. Figure and plan your route. It might be from your home to a cabin in the woods, home of a relative or a friend who is out of a dangerous area as well. And, yeah, I mean, obviously, this is stuff to think about in these times. Look at what's going on over in Wuhan and in, the, in a lot of other areas in China as well. What if that heads this way? What if, you know, if you're living in L.A., if you're living in New York, if you're living in Vegas, if you're living in Philly, Toronto, Chicago, you know, and can you imagine they go on lockdown or, or there's rumors of lockdown? Are you going to bug out or are you going to hold up? What are you guys going to do? Let us let us know. Let's hear your voice on this one in the comments. Things to think about. We have a lot of things to think about in these times. So while planning your route, determine the location of places to stop and camp that are on federal, state, or public land. Obviously, trespassing on private pro property is illegal, and some places might get you shot. Uh, download the Onyx app. It's, it uses tax assessor records and will give you the names and addresses of landowners. Good to know if public land is impossible to find. Determine if it's better to travel by day or by night. That'll be a decision you'll make while you're on the go. Of course, it depends on the threat of the situation. If you have an ATV or another vehicle you are transporting, like a motorcycle, make sure you hide it off the road when you camp. Look for areas that are wooded, offer thick concealment. If you can, can't find a wooded area, look for low-lying areas or areas obscured, not a hill. Make sure you set up your camp at least 100 to 200 yards from the road. 
Never walk directly to your camp. Do a J-hook, which will allow you to double back and see if anybody's following you. Make sure everyone in your group understands how to do this. Don't plan on having a fire. If you must, use a small camp stove or a sterno. Remember that smoke can give you away as fast as a fire. Always look for a campsite with good cover around it. Trees, hills, rocks, cliffs, brush. Make sure you always have a lookout 24-7. Rotate shifts every 2-3 hours. If you have multiple tents, make sure each is facing outward so you can keep watch. Try to buy tents with dull neutral colors. If you have a bright colored one, try to camouflage it with a poncho or branches and leaves. Place the tents close to cover like a large fallen tree. Establish a rallying point, specific place where you all agree to meet. If you get separated on a trip, watch out for natural hazards while choosing your campsite. Includes flooded plains, dead branches above or, or wind widow makers avalanche or rock slide areas. Consider an evasion shelter. This is a shelter that's very low to the ground, small and compact, natural or camo color and not shiny. And it doesn't have to be a tent. If the weather, weather is fair, you could sleep in a bivy bag with a sleeping bag inside. Conceal your packs about 10 to 20 yards from your tents in case of thieves as night. And that's just a summary. There's a video below here as well. And uh, definitely I've been spending an awful lot of time learning more and more about, you know, really roughing it and uh you know just been drawn to that lately it's perhaps intuition what are you guys doing what are you guys thinking as well uh thank you guys so much for your support over on patreon and also on ko-fi join us over there and it keeps the channel going and as always my friends stay safe stay prepared god bless and namaste